I'm Clara Chu, Chair of the Department of Library Information Studies, and I want to welcome all of you here and welcome the External Review Panel for accreditation and also those of us who are joining us through cyberspace. Uh, there's a small camera that uh, people can see what's going on here and can hear us. So uh, this is a wonderful opportunity for us to be able to share what we do here in our department with our external review panel and then a wonderful opportunity for them to get to know our community. So uh, with that short introduction, I'd like to introduce the external review panel and have them do an introduction and overview of the process. So first we have Diane Barlow to my right, and she is the chair of the panel and a faculty member and associate dean at the University of Maryland. Then we have Diane Covington, and she is biology and chemistry librarian at Carnegie Mellon University. And then uh, she is followed by Jim Reddick, who is university librarian at the, the University of Richmond. And then we have Jennifer Gallant, and she is uh, director of the Elyria Public Library in Ohio. And then we have the fifth panel member, Gertrude Coe, who is professor at Dominican University. So welcome to all of you, and I'll turn it over. Thank you. Let's see. I hate to be behind the podium, but I think I'm just going to walk around. Um, seems awfully Thank you, and thank you for coming out on a Sunday <coughs> afternoon. Uh, I know that we have to get through at a certain time because the Super Bowl is tonight. And, <laughs> <laughs> and I, don't, I don't care who wins. I'm a Dallas Cowboys fan. Um, <laughs> today, this was not a good year. At least it's in Dallas. <laughs> but she's from Pittsburgh. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's very good. So we will. We'll get everybody out of here in time to go and watch uh, the Super Bowl. But I do thank you for coming, because this is a very important day. It's a very important process for the, uh, the department. It's a very important process for the profession, uh, accreditation. And we want to enjoy our time here, and we have so far, but we're also working very hard on, uh, behalf, on your behalf and on behalf of the Committee on Accreditation. Now, many of you, I'm sure, have been through accreditation. Oops, I forgot to do something. No, they've already been introduced, right? Yes. <laughs> okay. In a minute, I'm going to ask you to introduce yourself, but I want to talk a little bit about accreditation. Um, many of you have probably been through accreditation before, either as a participant like you are now, or even as a member of a review panel. Um, I, um, I know that Clara has been a member of an external review panel, one of these groups, and maybe some of the others of you have also. And so you know, um, you know as much about uh, accreditation as I do, but there will also be people in the room who haven't been through this process or going through it for the first time. And so I'd like to explain a little bit of it uh, to you. As you know, the accreditation for LIS programs is done by the American Library Association. And ALA has a committee on accreditation which um, is in charge of the accreditation process, and they are assisted or staffed by an office on accreditation. So there is a structure for this. Every seven years, every ALA accredited program undergoes a periodic review. And every seven years falls around pretty fast, I can tell you that, that seven years flies by. This program has been reviewed more recently than seven years because of its uh, status as conditional accreditation. So I believe it was three years ago um, that was the last review. But we're not really concerned with your previous review. We're doing a, a ground up review uh, this time. Um, and. Uh, so we don't really uh, know a lot about what happened previously. This is a fresh review. We uh, were asked, but let, let me go back a minute. The Committee on Accreditation collects data on programs periodically, annually actually. Uh, all of the programs submit a, a data, uh, set of data that go, it's called the ELISE report 
and it goes to uh, the Association for Library and Information Science Education and to the Committee on Accreditation. And that data then is kept and is reviewed every year by uh, COA. Every two years, the program, every program submits a biennial narrative report, which is a longer report that states and reports on what the program is doing to assure compliance, that it stays in compliance with the standards that COA, uh, that, that COA has established. There are six of those standards. They address mission goals and objectives, curriculum, faculty, students, um, administration and financial resources, and physical facilities and, and resources. And I should have asked all the faculty members in this room to recite those with me because <laughs> <laughs> you can say standard one. Yes, I know that's mission goals and objectives. Uh, but all of the work and all of the data collection is organized uh, within the framework of those six standards. So if you think about it, what's happening is that a program is building a a, a record of uh, information about itself <coughs> for COA, and, and this is reviewed annually, um, and then every seven years, or uh, in the case of this program, uh, three years hence, this, uh, there is a complete review. When the complete review comes about, uh, the program prepares a program presentation uh, the one this time for this program looks like this. In it, the program, and uh, we've seen the working groups, we know who you are, who wrote all of these, and we thank you. The program de uh, describes how it is staying and how it meets the ALA standards. So here's standard one, mission goals and objectives, and it goes all the way through uh, the six standards. In addition to this, um, this document, which is rather slim, uh, there was a, a disk provided that's in my computer right now, so I don't have it right here. There is an accreditation website, and there is a, a repository of electronic files that is very extensive. So there is a lot of information that the program has put together for our use and for COA's use. COA itself doesn't visit the program. It doesn't do a site visit that is its members. It asks um, members of the profession and members of the educational um, institutions, the, the LIS schools, who have been trained to be program reviewers to, uh, it, it is commissions a team, an external <coughs> review panel, to go out and visit the program. And that's who we are. Our job while we're here is to talk to as many people as we can talk to who are stakeholders in this program. So that will be um, the administration of the college and the campus uh, and the department. It will be the faculty members in the department. It will be the students, the staff, the alumni, employers, practicum supervisors. Um, did I say faculty? Faculty, both regular faculty and adjunct faculty. As many people as we can. And so we're going to be uh, talking to a lot of people. We've already started that process, and we're, we're continuing it today, and we will talk, talk, talk um, on Monday and Tuesday. There are interviews with every um, regular faculty member, and those are scheduled, as you know. Um, I came, actually came into town on Thursday, and Clara very uh, kindly drove me down to Charlotte on Friday, and I spent the day in Charlotte talking to the same group of people. I talked to the provost, I talked to the, um, uh, I'm sorry, I talked to the dean of the graduate school and to the staff there um, uh, and to Beth and, and to the graduate assistant. I talked to students, I talked to adjuncts, I talked to employers and practical supervisors and gathered a lot of information. We have, we will work through Tuesday and then, and through Tuesday night, and then Wednesday we all go back uh, to wherever we live. But we will produce, and we will have it just about ready uh, before we leave here. We will have a report, no more than 20 pages, um, ready for COA, that's right. No more than 20 pages, and it's really, that's, it's hard to address six standards in 20 pages. 
Uh, but we will do that, and we will get our report ready. It will be a report of what we found. It will be organized by standard, just like all of these other documents are organized. Uh, and we will, so we will start with standard one, and we will, we will, our job is to supplement. It's not to, to repeat what's in here or on the disk or on the website, but what we found in addition to clarify and to expand what is in here. And we will send that report to Clara, and she will have a chance to review it for errors of fact. So if we say, for example, that you have um, 230 master students and the correct number is 176, or you, that sort of er, uh, error of fact will be, uh, um, can be corrected. And then the report goes to COA. Um, COA meets during, um, meets four times a year, but in their meeting in, in, uh, at, in June, at ALA's uh, annual <coughs> conference. Uh, both Clara and I will appear before COA, and they will, the committee will can again ask Clara questions um, that they need answered, uh, that haven't been answered in all these other documentations, and those always arise. And then we will go away, and the committee, uh, during its deliberations, will, uh, will make the decision on the renewal of accreditation for uh, for Greensboro uh, campus. So uh, you can see from my description of this that we are not decision makers. Our, our report will have nothing about a, re a recommendation, nothing. We are not allowed to do that. We don't want to do that. That's not our job. We are here as fact finders, as eyes and ears for COA in Greensboro, and we're going to do the best job we can to listen and talk and look and observe and that's why we're so interested in talking to you and why we're so glad that you're here today and why we want to talk to you uh, over the next couple of days as well. Now, what should I have said that I didn't say about the, CO, about the accreditation process? Did I leave out a step? <coughs> After the report goes to Claire, then what happens between then and June? Oh, well, we, we, we finalize the report and it goes to COA and actually the school has an opportunity to put in a second small report if they feel that we, we that there was something in our, our report that really is just um, <coughs> not correct and, and it couldn't get, it didn't get corrected to their satisfaction, you can put in another report. Um, so there's plenty of opportunity. I don't want to call it a rebuttal because it really isn't that. <laughs> it's, it's just it's just a friendly amendment to, to the report. But uh, but we want to. Uh, I mean, our job is to is to do the best, as I said, for COA and for the program and for the, because that's what's going to serve the profession the best. So, are there any questions about this you process? You want to mention confidentiality issues? Sure. Would you like to talk a bit about confidentiality? We have to maintain strict confidentiality. <laughs> <laughs> I could have said that. <laughs> yes, we do, as a matter of fact. And uh, everything that, um, that is told to us and said to us while we're here is confidential. It's just not, we don't talk about it uh, when we leave. Um, I, I, we talk among ourselves, we share information. Uh, but we don't talk about it with anybody else. That's not appropriate, um, and it's uh, so you can be assured that uh, of that. Any other question? Any questions about the process? It's a it's a uh, it's a thorough process, and we um, we met yesterday. Like I say, I was here Friday and went to Charlotte. Uh, the rest of the panel arrived uh, yesterday. We met um, yesterday afternoon and worked a while. We met at the hotel this morning and worked a while and then we came on campus. And, and um, uh, so it's, it's a, um, we try to make, we try to use our time efficiently while we're here because we're only here for, for this very brief period of time. Which is a good thing from the program's point of view. <laughs> so we get here, we do our work, and then we leave. 
I've been I've been in Clara's position as the one who organizes the accreditation review, so I can appreciate her her role also. Um, so and and we've been the the preparation has been wonderful. We we're getting everything we need to to move forward. So, well, I want, we want to know who you are, and we've met some of you individually, but um, would you mind just going around the room and, and uh, telling us who you are uh, briefly, so that we all know, you know who we are now. Okay. <laughs> okay, well, we'll start over here. <laughs> I, uh, I'll look this way since everybody knows me on this side. Anthony Chow, I'm assistant professor on, on the faculty. I'm Kelly Branick, and I am the School Library Media Consultant at the North Carolina Department of Public Instruction, and I serve on the uh, LIS Advisory Committee. I'm uh, Bill Keeley. I'm a visiting associate professor in the department. Jim Carmichael, faculty of the LIS Department. Bill Finley, I'm the Special Collections Librarian here at Jackson Library. Cheryl Holmes, Reference Librarian, University Coordinator, University Libraries, also serve on the LIS Advisory Committee. Andrew Fyatt, graduate student. Nora Bird, I'm an assistant professor in the LIS department. Yeah. Bridget Blanton, I'm the assistant director for the Greensboro Public Library and on the LIS Advisory Committee. Did you say Greensville Public Library? Greensboro. Greensboro mm -hmm. Public Library. I'm Julie Hersberger, I'm an associate professor in the department. I'm Linda Kellum, I'm the Data Services and Government Information Librarian at Jackson and alumna um, from 2007. I'm Mary Boone, I'm the State Librarian of North Carolina and I'm also on the advisory committee. I'm Dennis Fry, I am uh, I represent a K-12 school district in Rockingham County, just north of Greensboro. I'm the Director of Media and Instructional Technology and I serve on the LIS advisory <clears throat> I'm David Bryson. I'm the Director of Library Services at Smith Library High Point University, <coughs> and I teach as an adjunct on the department. And I'm Linda Gann. I'm Assistant Professor here at the faculty. I'm Billy Durham, School Library Program Coordinator for the department. Uh, my name is Mandy Ozan, and I'm a student in the department. Uh, I'm Shani Tao, Assistant Dean for Collections and Technical Services at uh, University Libraries. Also, I'm a, a project director and work with the several faculty on the academic and cultural enrichment program, or a scholars program, which was funded twice by INS. Hi, I'm Liz Shiraz, graduate student. Hi, I'm Sarah Anderson, I'm a master's student, and I'm the president of the Library and Information Studies Student Association. I'm Laura Cruz, and I'm an alum from December, and I also am a resources librarian in Forsyth County. Maybe Smith Custer, I'm a student in the department and also a graduate assistant. Steve Summerford, I'm assistant director of the Greensboro Public Library and on the advisory committee. I'm Barrett Marjorie, and I'm alumni as of December 2010. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> I'm on the faculty of the LAS department. Uh, I'm Cindy Phelps. I'm the um, department secretary, and this is my husband coming to help me today. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm Nancy Cole, I'm a graduate student too. <laughs> my husband is. And Clara Chu. <laughs> we wanted everybody to be in. Actually, you did me. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, also, we have some uh, guests online too. Uh, my name is Fatio, I'm a faculty member. And we have about uh, uh, six uh, participants online, and three of them are, one of them is uh, Christian Burrs, he's our current student. Beth Martin, uh, she's our uh, Charlotte program coordinator. And Steve Strutter, he's advisory board member, also he graduated from our program in 1995. So there are other anonymous uh, participants. <laughs> they, <laughs> they could log in uh, through uh, a link that we have posted, so they, they don't have to the okay, well, we want to thank them for coming sure. also. Yeah. Um, anything else? It's, it's uh, about time for us to break out into the groups we're going to do. But any other questions that we can answer before, before we go into smaller groups? All right. Um, we have two group meetings 
that will happen. Let's see, in 303, which I think is the room farthest down the hall, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yes, on the right. Yeah, alums will be meeting in room 303 with Diane Covington and Jim Reddick. And then um, practicum supervisors and employers will meet in 309, which is just out here, and they will be meeting uh, with Jennifer and uh, with me. And then uh, Gertrude has a one-on-one -on -one meeting with a, with a faculty member um, that we're having today. So at this point, I guess we want to just go to our individual, our, our group meetings, is yes. that right? Yes, and if somebody wants to grab some refreshments and take it with them. Yeah, <laughs> please eat the food. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs>